Thank you very much for your interest in my introduction into the uh, source fracture surface analysis toolbox. In this video, I will shortly introduce you to the toolbox and why we developed it, what you can do with it, and how you can use it, and then uh, showing a bit of the power um, that this toolbox uh, provides for you. The basic idea is already sketched on this first slide. So assume you have some kind of rock probe. It might be from a trilling, um, might be that it's a piece you found on the field and you're interested in analyzing its surface and try to quantify the fractured roughness. Um, so you will obtain some kind of scan that can be a profile, can be like here a 2D uh, fracture surface, and then you digitize it digitalize it with some kind of scanners and uh, with EPSA you can calculate the relative height distributions and then doing analysis of this roughness in various fashions um, and then obtain something like shown on the right uh, some roughness profiles here shown for different kind of joint roughness coefficients from this kind of sample. The motivation for us was uh, pretty much that there is so many literature in recent years that studies the influence of fracture roughness on physical processes. So it's well known that fracture roughness and the resulting aperture distribution um, influences flow and transport in fractures dramatically. Um, but recently, so the focus on heat transfer, for example, on fracture roughness and contact area has been in the major scope uh, for many studies. And uh, the problem for us was that in current literature, the description of those rough and smooth fractures is always remain on a very qualitative level, which is a hurdle uh, of reproduction and then also for like trying to model things, um, study processes, study influences across different kind of experimental uh, laboratory or laboratory studies. Um, and then if Reference parameters are given, um, they often remain on a very basic level. Let's say, like the joint reference coefficient is a very common parameter, easy to calculate as well. Um, but this is not telling you everything you might need about the fracture surface and the physical processes taking place across this fracture. But of course, it's, it's, it's for, for scientists, you cannot spend hours and, and, and weeks to calculate all this kind of different reference parameters. It's a very cumbersome work. Um, and so we decided to develop apps uh, to provide researchers with the possibility um, to easily and quickly calculate a large number, over 20 roughness parameters um, and their heterogeneity and their anisotropy across fracture surfaces. So we therefore decided to develop this toolbox within MATLAB. Um, and it is, we try to keep the toolbox as flexible as possible. So you can analyze similar single height profiles. It's, it's also independent of the size. Um, so you can, you can have something, a surface of a large fracture, a couple of meters, tens of meters, you collect it in the field. Um, or you can have really, really tiny samples from your trill holes. It can be rectangular, it can be elliptic or round, whatever you like. And we also provide um, pre, and pro, pre and post processing tools in AFSA. I will give you clients about that later. Um, and uh, also provide you with all the possibilities to, you know, continue working with the digital models. So, for example, you could now use the, the, the aperture distribution that is generated within AFSA, then to, to start flow modeling or any kind of these things, right? And it was also very important for us to have that sort of verified uh, by scientific standards um, using standard profiles, artificial surfaces that have been generated with a known behavior and then trying to reproduce this behavior in a multiple um, sense. So the code is freely available at uh, GitLab. You can download it there. Uh, we recommend to use it with MATLAB 2020A or newer, uh, but that's mainly for the visualization. So AppSet will also work with all the versions, but the uh, image generation uh, and the export function especially uh, only works in MATLAB 2020A or newer. You then have to prepare your raw data and your metadata. 
and we try to do this um, extremely simple. So the Mavis data is just providing basic information in a MATLAB structure. Um, there is examples given in the code, of course, and there's a manual um, that goes through, through the process. Um, and then having the raw data, very simple, column wise, X, Y, Z, or if you have just have a high profile, just X and Z data with some kind of delimiter column wise, it's a standard form and most um, scanner software will, will provide the software to you anyway. And then there's a simple script. You link or you provide the script with the, the, the file where you made the data is stored. And then you go. So trying to keep the process in the herd for you very simple. But of course, the open source nature of EPSA enables you with the possibility to tinker around, add up um, roughness analysis you personally like, you think is important for your project. Right? All those um, can be done. Um, giving tiers or is up the raw data um, as you get it from, from a scanner data, for example, or from any kind of statistical software if you generate your fracture surface uh, with some kind of fracture network generator. Um, the metadata, of course, depends on what exactly you ask MATLAB to do or FSET to do. Um, so we, we separated four different cases, we call it. You can have a single height profile, you can have a single fracture surface, or you can have two height profiles, which combined will result in a cut through the fracture. Um, or you can have two complementary surfaces, which actually then form a fracture. Right. And just to give an example of the metadata you need to provide, of course, you need to provide the, the physical units in which the uh, metadata, the raw data is provided. Um, scanners are often inaccurate at the boundaries, so you might want to cut off, for example, some values at the boundaries. Um, if you want to have, like if you have two high profiles or two fracture surfaces, which are supposed to be combined to a fracture, right, you need to, to provide an, an estimated mechanical aperture, or if you don't provide it, FSET will choose one for you until the first point of contact. Um, but in the pre-processing, um, you can rotate um, your profile and doing all that kind of stuff, right? But this is, well, I can't go too much into detail, but there is a good description in the manual that is provided with FSET as well as there are a couple of YouTube videos um, available that guide you through the steps. Now, what, what do you get as an output? Um, as I already said, we try to be very transparent to store the step calculations um, for you in an accessible way in uh, CSV files, the corporated comma separate value files, as well as the MATLAB internal MATLAB files, so you can easily process on your own. Um, here, we just give a couple of examples. So if you have a fracture surface, um, then there are different kind of parameters you can uh, determine the roughness for the whole fracture surface so using the whole 3D nature of your surface. But a lot of roughness parameters classically were developed for profiles. So what you can do is you can split your surface into single profiles. Um, this also, for example, allows you to study the anisotropy um, of the fracture surface. And here on the left, you see uh, an example of a rose diagram for the first exponent on one fracture. Um, surface, um, you see, well, there's, there's not so much anisotropy a little bit in, in, in this direction. In one of the main two directions, um, here you, you get these kind of box plots, again, for, for the JRC, so first exponent and JRC are two very common roughness parameters, very easy to obtain. Right? And you see, okay, so they have a mean value of around 12, but you see now there's, there's some range about it, there are a couple of outliers also. Um, which are very, very smooth um, profiles. And of course, you get the hard numbers. Um, and, and we try to set as much as possible into relations. Um, so you get with dimension one and two of the top surface, um, you get that the x and y direction pretty much, the horizontal and vertical um, dimension. Um, you, can, you can see how anisotropic your body is. So in this case, you see it's not that much. Um, you can see that for the for the bottom uh, surface of so here we had actually two uh, fracture surfaces at top and bottom, um, and you see again there it's very simple. There's also not much difference for each dimension, um, and we calculate the mean value in both direction. The anisotropy is a mean value. So you see we try to calculate as much as possible to provide you with information uh, that is possible, and you can decide uh, what information it actually is important for you in this specific case. 
Um, but also this is great information, for example, for reproducibility, if you really want to characterize your sample fully, this is, uh, this is what we have then more than 20 roughness parameters. And you get this for the mean values, but also you can get the range from minimum to maximum values. You get the standard deviation, so you get an idea of how strong is the variation across a fracture surface. And you can see large differences, for example, in natural fractures compared to artificially fractured samples. Um, so this is really a very a source of a lot of information. I will just very, very quickly spend the last couple of uh, slides of my talk um, to, to show you an example uh, of how to use app size. So here we would just have two samples of two sunstones of the Flechtinger and the Remling sunstones. It's both um, carried in, in, in Germany um, with the Flechtinger having a bit larger grain size a bit more heterogeneous, rambling, a bit more homogeneous, finer grains. Um, both samples are uh, 10 centimeters diameter, 15 centimeters height. Uh, we are artificially fractured through splitting tests. The resulting surfaces were scanned with the Next Engine Scan Studio Pro in, in the highest resolution possible. And then we also uh, reassembled both fracture halves to conduct Darcy tests to get an idea about the effect of hydraulic pressure. Um, of each of those sample, or of both rock types, we have five samples each. Um, so what you can see here, for example, is this back and forth side um, of the samples and how we uh, calculated the deviation from a common mean line in FSAT. And so you can, you can nicely see here A and B. Uh, if you put those two halves together, you will see they, they will form very nicely together as well as here with uh, C and D. And uh, if we go across the, the, the five samples, for example, we, we can look at, at different kind of, of parameters. So we check zero crossings. So this is how often does the height profile crosses the mean line. Um, and uh, you see that there is a bit of anisotropy uh, between the samples, but you, but you can't really um, see the difference between the base rock types, so the first five samples of the Flechtinger and the last five samples of the Remlinger. So um, and there's also shown the mean and the, ever, uh, the standard deviation of the mean, uh, and you see, well, that this, there's yeah, not much, besides the anisotropy, which is common across both, um, there's not much variation. Uh, if we go for the fractile dimension, which is related to the Hurst exponent, um, you also see, well, there isn't, there isn't much change between both rock types. Um, there's a bit of anisotropy in the, in the Flechtinger samples, not so much in the Remlinger, interestingly. Um, but it is difficult to, to separate both rock types. I mean, it's both sandstones, so of course you expect some uh, similarities. But because we have a tool of fracture surfaces, we can, uh, for example, take a look at true 2D and 3D measures. Um, so there are parameters you can calculate on a profile base as well as for a whole surface. Um, and this is the, the set two value, for example, or the, the profile angularity. Um, and there you can see across a scale very much different between the flechting and the rambling samples. Right? Um, of course, for the 3D measures, you, you don't get any anisotropy because you're already analyzing the whole surface. Right? Um, but here, for example, you can also say in the profile angularity, interestingly, that not the values change so much, but the rambling has showed a much stronger variation of those parameters um, across the surface than the flecting, which are way more homogeneous in those values. Right. Um, and there you see, for example, also the anisotropy is not so much uh, strong for those, for those parameters. Uh, you can see maybe a bit more uh, deviation here in, in the x-direction than in the y-direction. But the question is how, how statistically evident this is. But also interestingly is, for example, if you compare a lot of those roughness parameters, is that all three roughness, uh, 3D roughness parameters, although they're called, calculated completely differently, um, show very similar behaviors so also for the different rock types and relatively between the different samples of a rock type. And this already shows you, hopefully, that it's not sufficient just, you know, to look at one roughness parameters and make your whole analysis or decision based on this one roughness parameter. But different roughness parameters 
um, target different aspects of the fracture surface and therefore only looking at a great number of fracture, surf, uh, of fracture roughness uh, parameters will allow you an in-depth analysis. Right in here just as an example showing you that the uh, aperture calculation of the Flechtinger and the Remlinger sample and you can see a very nice already flow path, a potential flow path, uh, and you see a couple of micropores, a macropores here, um, which is in the flechting are probably generated due to the to splitting process. So a um, larger portion of cranes have, have broken apart during the splitting protest process. In the in the sample here, you might be seeing that there is a bit in the corner and there is some some strong anisotropy, some trend here in this direction. Um, so now you could use those kind of virtual distributions as I said, for flow and uh, modeling or any other um, process you need. Thank you very much. Coming to an end here. Um, if you like, if you have that could be useful for you, go to GitLab, download the code. Um, I uploaded a couple of YouTube videos explaining how to use um, Get uh, FSAT within MATLAB and with the test data that we provide so that you can get started easily. Uh, please also uh, take a look at our uh, publication just published at the beginning of this year in Computers and Geotechnics, um, where we go through all the roughness parameters we have been calculated and calculate uh, and discuss a bit more in depth our uh, results I just have quickly highlighted in this video. Thank you very much for your interest.